Alright, in this video I want to talk a little bit about hydrostatic force and finding the hydrostatic force against uh, you know, an object, for example, maybe a dam and a river. And obviously this is something that would be important if you're an engineer. Uh, you know, you would want to figure out these forces so that you can hopefully make your, your whatever you're building sturdy enough to, to withstand those forces. So, um, you know, the basic idea with hydrostatic force, um, and again, kind of intuitively, so we'll get we'll get to the the serious stuff in a second here. Uh, intuitively, the idea you know if you've ever been swimming in a pool or in the ocean or wherever, um, at least in the pool I used to always go to, right? If you're only a little bit below the water, you feel a little bit of a force, a little bit of pressure on your ears, um, but it's usually not too bad. So, and the idea is. Really, what's causing that uh, that force is the weight of the water um, that's above you. You can think about it in that respect. So, when you're near the top of the water, there's not much water. Sort of, uh, you know, there's not a lot of uh, the weight of the water is not too bad. That's forcing down on your head. But if you go further down into the pool, now you've got a whole sort of column of water. It's, you know, the weight is being pushed down on you, um, and it creates a lot more force, and it makes, uh, uh, you know, makes it uh, much more painful as, uh, as you swim further down. So we're going to try to uh, formalize this idea here a little bit, and then we'll do some uh, kind of some typical calculus problems they like to ask about this stuff. So uh, let's start off uh, by deriving the formula. So I'm not going to do any actual examples in this, this video. Um, I think what I'm going to do is derive the formula, give you a sense of where it comes from, hopefully, um, and then make a few remarks. And in a different video, we'll actually grind out some mechanical examples. So, All right, so let's start off here. So Suppose we've got a thin little horizontal plate, okay, so imagine you've got a little plate um, of whatever, some kind of, uh, you know, metal or concrete or whatever, um, and this is supposed to be kind of horizontal in the water, so, uh, you know, trying to uh, uh, make a decent picture here. So suppose this plate has an area of A square meters, okay, and it's submerged in a fluid with density... Um, it's called something else. I'm going to call it P because it looks like a P. So we have density P kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so, uh, you, you know, the object could be in water. It could be in something different. Um, so we'll have to take the density of the material uh, that it's in into consideration. And it's at a depth of D meters below the surface. So we've got a little horizontal plate. Uh, it's in some liquid with a certain density, and it's so far down below the water. Well, to figure out the force on that plate, we can just use a little, uh, some uh, good old uh, new Newtonian laws of uh, uh, physics here. So uh, force, remember, is mass times acceleration. And that's what we're trying to figure out here is an, uh, an expression for the force. Well, okay, so mass times, well, in this case, the acceleration is going to come from gravity. Okay, and recall gravity is, I always forget, 9.8, um, so gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, I'm going to be a little sloppy here and leave off units. I'm kind of bad about units. So in a second, I'm just going to start writing 9.8. Okay, so that's the force. It's mass times acceleration, which in this case is gravity. Well, we're going to come up with a little expression here for the mass. Okay, so recall a couple things here. Remember that volume, volume is defined to be mass over density. Okay, so mass, that's our little, uh, that's our value m. Density is this, uh, this p that we're going to call it. Okay, so that's the volume here. Well, let's go back to our picture now. Okay, so if you think about our little picture here, think about how much water, um, kind of the, the volume of the water that's pushing down on this little plate. So we've got this little plate down here. If you kind of think about the column of water that's sort of, uh, you know, pushing down on that, that plate. Well, it's got a certain volume. Okay, so what would be the volume of the water sort of pushing down on that plate? Well, it's going to be whatever the area of the plate is. Okay, it's going to be whatever the area of the plate is. So that's going to give you kind of the, the two-dimensional, kind of the floor of the box, if you want to think about it that way. And then we would just multiply that simply by uh, the distance or the depth uh, below the water that you are. So the volume of the water will be the area of the plate times its depth. Okay, so no big deal there. But now we can take our equation that we just had here. We said that volume, we said that that's mass times density, 
Okay. Well, correspondingly, um, oh, I totally, what am I saying here? Volume is not mass times density. Volume is mass divided by density. Okay, let's be a little careful there. Well, again, we said force was mass times acceleration. Okay, so if we solve here for the mass, that means that the mass is going to be the density times the volume. So I'm just multiplying most, both sides by my density here. Okay, so mass is density times volume, but we just said that the volume of the water is going to be the area of the plate. It's going to be the area of that plate times the depth. And now we've got a nice little uh, useful expression for figuring out the force on that plate, because we said again, force is mass times acceleration. But now we've got an expression for the mass. It's going to be the density of the fluid. Uh, times the area of that little plate, times the depth that it's at, and then we have to multiply that by gravity. Okay, so this little expression to me is kind of uh, very important on doing these problems. Uh, basically, uh, when we go through these problems, I'm going to kind of have to figure out a generic expression for some of these things. Uh, the density is going to be constant, constant uh, in these problems, typically. Uh, a lot of times, again, you're just sitting in water. Uh, the acceleration due to gravity, that's constant. Uh, the area, we'll have to come up with an expression for that. That will change. Um, and also the depth will change a little bit. But this is kind of the, uh, the key equation uh, to get going here. So kind of the general idea on these problems, the way that we do these. Um, so I made a little basic strategy here. Um, and again, hopefully this will make more sense in a, in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an expression for a generic sort of little area. So I'm going to do a problem here in a, a second where we've got a little triangular plate underneath the water. So we're going to have a little triangular plate underneath the water. The first thing that you do is we're going to sort of chop our, our little plate up. Okay, so I want to figure out how much force is on this horizontal plate. What we're going to do is just chop it up into n pieces. Okay. So we're going to chop it up into n pieces, each one of sort of a height of delta x. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the force on each one of those little pieces. Okay, so this is where the integration is now going to come into it. So we're going to figure out the force on each little piece. We'll approximate it. So we'll approximate this force, this force, this force, this force, etc. And what we're going to do is we're going to chop this up into more and more pieces. Okay, so we're going to take a limit as n goes to infinity. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us a nice little integral. Okay, so we're going to chop it up into pieces. And this is where I'm saying we're going to have to find an, an expression for the generic area because, you know, the area of this little plate that we're getting, you know, so certainly the area at the top of the plate, if you take a little slice of it, there's more area there than at the bottom of the plate if we take a little slice there. So um, the area is changing as we move uh, down through the fluid, at least in this case. So we're going to have to find an expression for that generic area. And this is the part that typically uses some geometry. So this is usually, you know, I think maybe the little tricky part. Once we have that, we're going to multiply. So we'll have a generic uh, expression for the area. We're going to multiply that expression by the density uh, of the fluid times the acceleration due to gravity times depth. Um, and, you know, the depth also, too. We'll have to think a little bit about an expression for that, but that's not too terrible. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're just going to add up the approximations, take a limit, and again, that's going to give us a nice little definite integral. Okay, so one little remark um, on these problems, just with units. For density times gravity, if things are in meters, basically uh, at the end of the day, you're going to multiply this uh, this area expression by 9.8 times 1,000. Uh, so that's the acceleration. This is going to be the density of water. Um, and then you're going to have to multiply that by an expression for the depth. If they give you uh, units in terms of feet, and you'll see one of these, uh, we'll definitely do one of these. If they give you the units in, in terms of feet, instead of multiplying by 9.8 and 1,000, we're going to multiply by the weight of water, uh, 62.5. I believe it's 62.5 um, pounds per cubic foot is, is the weight of water. Okay, so again, we'll talk about these a little bit as I actually do some examples. But this is the basic idea, and again, that's where the formula comes from. Hopefully it gives you a little bit of insight. Sometimes people don't really care about this stuff at all. So uh, if not, sorry to, to, uh, to make you sit through it. Um, we'll do some concrete examples here in just a second.